This is a Phalaenopsis no ID, but in this household, we call her Alexandra after the actual owner of this orchid. I am just her caretaker, just the babysitter, so to speak. And for many years, she was in a semi-hydroponic setup with just lava rock, producing spikes like these year in, year out. And then the babysitter had a change of heart because I just happened to like uniformity. And as the Phalaenopsis collection grew, I had all my others in Lekka and self-watering. So I switched Alexandra into the same setup because I like uniformity. <laughs> and she grew just fine in Lekka for several years until she didn't. Even though many orchids can handle the same setup, not all orchids in the same genus are going to perform the same. And that is exactly what Alexandra showed me. Having noticed her decline, I switched her back into lava rock. This was back in August of 2023 when she was in active root growth, but how is she doing now? Well, thanks to the verdant turf, we are about to find out. Welcome to this video. I appreciate that you clicked on it. So let's have a look, see not just at Alexandra, because while we are on the subject of updating the progress of the fowls and lava rock, Alexandra is not the only one that I have. So I'm going to add the others as well. That includes a keiki and a long time rescue Doriteanopsis. Anyway, this is Alexandra. No blooms throughout the winter of 23-24 and currently just starting her new leaf. Madam is not exactly in a sulk phase. I would say that she probably would have bloomed if I had had the right light conditions. The fact that she's not blooming at least least gives me a head start when it comes to vegetative growth, which is exactly what this orchid needs. It takes away the decision-making process that I would have to cut a spike prematurely to initiate active vegetative growth, so I'm glad I don't have to make that decision. <laughs> There has been no decline, which is great news. And that is super important. While her leaf from last year isn't exactly what I am accustomed to, it managed to pull through well enough. And considering she had next to no roots left, I am happy with this progress. I have active roots in the pot and I am fertilizing now as per if she were a super duper healthy orchid and she's getting around 500 parts per million of a well-balanced fertilizer but I am favoring CalMag and calcium nitrate at the same time because this will really encourage root growth, which I noticed happening with my Phalaenopsis Schilleriana. So calcium nitrate and CalMag are the two that I'm favoring and every once in a while she gets a glug of 500 parts per million of fertilizer. So the verdant turf, so far so good. Considering my conditions, she made it through the winter, which she would not have done if I had left her in Lekka and self-watering. Maybe she will spike for us in the coming winter, but you know what? If she doesn't, I'm quite okay with that. She's probably suspicious about the fact that I may just switch her back to Lekka. But anyway, we'll just give her a lot of time to settle back into lava rock, which she clearly prefers. Moving on to a rescue orchid. Now there's two. This is Dory Teanopsis Purple Gem Aida. She has been in my collection since 2018 and she arrived without any issues. She went straight into Lekka and self-watering, grew without any issues and then bada boom, bada bing. My conditions changed and the evaporative cooling of the Lekka weakened this orchid to such a degree that then enter scale. So this orchid and I have been working together to get rid of scale for many years. She was in an ICU setup and only last year did I pot her up into just lava rock in a self-watering setup. In my experience, Dory Teanopsis are not exactly generous root growers and if the humidity isn't high enough, oh boy, they will tell you straight away and any new roots that are starting to grow will just stop. So I do struggle with an extremely dry climate, 30% average. And for example, today I've got 13%. For that reason, this orchid stays indoors all the time. This way, at least the warm air is a little bit more buffered by the cooler interior. And hopefully with that and being lower in the pot, I can up the humidity and the whole little microclimate around her leaves. You may notice some yellow edging around the leaves. And that is because she's probably lacking magnesium, maybe even a little bit of nitrogen. And that is also because I'm waiting for roots to be established in the pot 
which means I'm extremely conservative on the fertilizer front. If there really is nothing that the orchid can absorb in the pot, in the media, then throwing fertilizer in there is only going to create salt buildup. Nothing is really going to be absorbed. And that is what I do not need when root tips touch the media. However, she is still with us. I'm very conservative on anything I put into that pot. Once again, focusing on calcium nitrate and CalMag. But as new structures grow, magnesium is a mobile nutrient, it will pull magnesium from older structures in order to make the newer structure grow better. And that is what I'm seeing this orchid doing. She has been scale free for the last month, but I am so wary about the welfare of this orchid that I do treat her preventatively with garlic alcohol every two weeks. The beautiful purple blooms and sequential blooming spike of this orchid makes it worth my while to put so much effort into her rescue. And the fact that she has come to this point one year after being taken out of ICU, I am encouraged by that. And finally, I have a little keiki, also straight into lava rock, and behold, it's a summer blooming species. This is Phalaenopsis pulchra 2.0, or junior. I prefer to actually say junior, gotta get used to saying junior, because a 2.0 in my collection means that the original, the mother plant, has died. Well, that is not the case. I still have mama pulchra. She is doing great on her mount, but this little keiki was doing so well on the mount as well, I thought, I'm going to be in trouble here with watering and keeping all the aerial roots happy and hydrated. So reluctantly, I took her off the mount, separated her from mama, put her into lava rock, being a summer bloomer. Again, lack of self-watering, not happening in my conditions for the winter. And she's doing great. So great, in fact, that the spike that I never cut off is producing another little cakey. <laughs> Maybe one day we will have Phalaenopsis is Pulcrest Central in this collection if all my other summer blooming fowls do not make it because of the conditions that I provide. If a pulcra with lava rock will do well, then bring on the keikis. At least we've got ourselves some summer bloomers <laughs> and not all is lost. When it comes to the continued well-being of all three of them and not losing root tips, my main focus is to make sure that the humidity is really high and in doing so I flush a lot. I have refrained from using my mister around these orchids because I am very concerned about possible stem rot. They are rescues after all. They are not as strong as a well-growing Phalaenopsis or Dorytheanopsis would be. So it's flushing, flushing, flushing and keeping that resin are filled with the supplements of calcium nitrate, CalMag as mentioned, and the occasional well-balanced orchid specific fertilizer. So there you have it, the Verdant Turf, and if you've watched to the end, if your name is not the Verdant Turf, I would like to say thank you so much for your time. If you have any questions, would like some more information in more detail, please use the comments. And if you just want to leave a comment and say hello, that would be awesome as well. I love hearing from you. And the fact that you're still here gives me the opportunity to wish you a fabulous day. On the condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.